Welcome back. Now, I figured before we proceed, uh, I want to give a brief informal like review or refresher on just the concept you'll find in rotational motion, just so we're all on the same page. And just want to look at two major concepts. The first one is torque. Let's just start off. What is torque? Well, torque is the tendency of a force to cause an object to rotate, or how much of a force actually causes a rotation. So the best way to actually describe torque is just to draw out an example. Let's just say we have an arbitrary shape. Let's just say something like that. And it has an axis of rotation right here. So it's going to rotate about this axis. And let's just say that we're interested at this point here. So when this whole entire object is rotating, this point will go will undergo a nice circular arc during the rotation. So it's going to look something like this. And that circular arc will have a radius given by the distance between these two points. We can call that D, or I'm just going to call it R. Now, let's just say that we have a force, just an arbitrary force, going off at this point here. What torque is concerned with is how does this force affect rotation, or this object's rotation. Essentially, how does this force affect this object moving along, well, this point moving along its circular track here? So, in order to see that, we're actually going to have to try and resolve this force here into two components. Now, you've seen this before, maybe in like algebra, but just so like you understand what I mean, let's just say we have a nice coordinate axis and typical xy axis. If you just have a vector here, you can call that f if you like, we can always resolve this vector into its x components and its y components. Basically just see x component and its y component. Now we're going to do the same thing here, but we're not going to use the Cartesian x and y axis. We're going to have to find two perpendicular axes that are really convenient for this circular rotation, or the circular track it's going to be moving on. So the two axes we're going to use are a radial axis that moves along the direction of the radius. And that's going to be perpendicular to our tangential axis. This axis is tangent to the circular track at one point. So now let's resolve this force into its radial component and its tangential component. So we can just graphically just draw out what this radial bit will be. So FR, typically you may see it as F uh, parallel, denoted with two parallel lines. And we can find out what the tangential component will be. We can denote that as FT or F perpendicular, denoted with a perpen two pip perpendicular lines. Now, let's just say that we knew what this angle is. Let's just say, call this angle phi. If that's the case, we can actually compute what the radial and tangential components will be. The Using a little bit of trig, we can find that the radial component will be f times cosine oops, cosine of phi, and the tangential co component will be f oops, times sine of phi. So now we have our force resolved into two components. Now let's see how each of these components affect the rotation of this object about its axis. So, 
if we take a look, this radial component won't affect the rotation at all because it won't actually move this point along the circular track. It's actually moving in a perpendicular direction. So this radial force will not affect rotation. This tangential force will definitely affect rotation because this is the part, well, this is the component of the force that actually moves this point along the circular track here. So we're concerned, well, torque is concerned with the tangential force. Now, the other major influence in torque is the actual distance between the axis and the point where the force is acting, and that the greater that distance, the greater the, uh, the well, the greater the distance, the easier it will be to rotate something, the shorter the distance, the harder it will be to rotate something, which is why, if you notice, uh, let's just say that this unusual object is a door, that's why the door handles are typically on the opposite side as the hinges, just easier to open and close. So using those two pieces of information, we can talk about our torque. The magnitude of our torque, that's going to be given by that distance between its axis and the point where the force is interacting, R, times the tangential component of the force. Or we can just rewrite it as R times F sine phi. Now, you typically see this equation in books, but it's important to keep in mind that this phi here is just to keep so that the R and the F, like the... Well, just to keep in mind that the force will be tangential or perpendicular to this radius, because that is what's going to cause rotation. Now, this can actually be generalized. You may have seen in vector form, where we have our torque vector is equal to the radius vector times with a cross product with the force vector. But we're not really going to talk about that here. And I'm tempted to cut it here and talk about the other concept in the next video. Yeah, I might just do that. So I'll continue this brief, like, un, uh, informal conceptual review in the next video.